Man, I'm obsessed with this thing. This is awesome. All right, day four, virtual math. Um, we're going back to back here. So if you knocked out, oh no, I got all my music playing. If you did day three and you watched the video and you did day four and you're knocking it out again, that's awesome. Um, but I'm gonna do the same deal that we've been doing. Uh, so let me get day four pulled up here. I don't think you can see that. There we go. All right, so for day four, this one, we're actually starting to see a little bit of variety with these questions. It's not necessarily the same that you've been seeing, which I prefer. I like that these are a little bit different. So whatever you've gotten for days one, two, and three, um, maybe don't expect the same thing, even though you've learned all this stuff. Um, it's just a different variety of questions. So I still expect you to do well. Um, but definitely a little bit different. So we'll start with number one, we'll work our way through. Um, here we go, all right, so day four, number one, Mary spent one sixth of last week's allowance and spent three sixths of this week's allowance. How much more allowance did Mary spend this week than last week? All right, so already I'm looking at the answer choices and I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing here because you could read this wrong and get an answer that you would find. Um, so let's look at the whiteboard. Three words should have stood out more than anything, and those words were how much more. Hopefully you got those underlined or highlighted, because how much more, same thing as how many more, that means you've got to subtract. Now, just because it gives, you, gives it to you in this order, does not mean you're gonna subtract in that order, because guys, that's not possible. You can't take a bigger number from a smaller number. So we're going to take three sixths. We're going to get rid of, subtract one sixth. Denominator we know is going to stay the same, but three minus one is going to give us two. Now, if you look at your answer choices, you don't see two sixths, but you know exactly what you need to do. You can cross multiply with your answer choices, or you can simplify. I'm going to simplify. Factors for two are just one and two. Factors for six are one, two, three, and six. My GCF would be two. And if I divide my numerator and my denominator by that GCF, that's going to give me one third, which is A. The reason I really like this one is because my fear would be that people are going to do three sixths plus one sixth and get four sixths which is not an answer choice, but if you simplify, you've got two thirds on there. So if you chose D two thirds, you did awesome math, but you did not read. When you see those words, how much more, you've got to know that you have to subtract. If they're not underlined on your paper, underline them now, because there's a chance you see it again uh, on another day this week or next week, whichever one. All right. Sorry, this is unprofessional. It's a Charlie video. He's awesome. All right. Oh, dude, am I recording? I am. God, I panicked. All right, looking at number two. It says, Benny has to read two books for school. Benny read seven-tenths of the first book on Sunday and nine-tenths of the second book on Tuesday. What total fraction of these two books has Danny or has Benny read? For a second, I thought this question was going a certain way and it was going to be awesome. Um, but this is still a good question because really it gives you some information that you don't need. Um, but total should tell me I've got to add these two together so I'll get my whiteboard going here we're going nine tenths plus seven tenths you know the denominator will not change that's supposed to be a 10 that's even worse come on dude and if you did nine plus seven you would get 16 16 tenths is not an answer choice uh, go through the mental checklist. Is it improper? Yes, you got to convert it to a mixed number. 
So remember, we talked about this, I think day two, maybe, or it might've been yesterday, I don't know. Um, but that fraction bar means divided by. So instead of saying 16 tenths, we're really saying 16 divided by 10. So how many whole times can 10 go into 16? It can go one whole time, because 10 times one gets me to 10. I needed to get to 16. What's my remainder? What's left? It's gonna be six. That becomes my numerator and my denominator doesn't change. That gives me one and six tenths, which is not an answer choice. You know for a fact, you did all this math correctly. Mental checklist, is it improper? No. Can it be simplified? Yes. So the one is fine. Go ahead and rewrite the one, circle it, don't forget it, it's down here. And then just list your factors for six tenths or six and 10. So one, two, three, six, one, two, five, ten. My GCF is gonna be two. And if I divide my numerator and my denominator by those, six divided by two is gonna give me three. 10 divided by two is gonna give me five, which is an answer choice. That would be D. Hopefully you didn't do all that work and choose A, because if you look at A, you've got three fifths, but you didn't forget the one, or you did forget the one if you chose that. And I'm really hoping nobody chose B and C, because once they got to this point, one and six tenths, if they panicked, they might've said, ooh, one and six eighths looks close, or one and three tenths looks close. Don't do that. Keep going. You, you know what you need to do if you don't see your answer. That, so far, it took us till day four for me to get to a question that I really, really, really liked. That's the one. To me, that's an EOG Friday question. Uh, you could have even gone a step further and said, how much more does he have left to read? Um, that's when the two would have been important. So you weren't really doing anything with the two on this one, but maybe in the future. Great question. Um, I'm going to put a little star on that one. All right, going... I think I just heard Miss G. Going to number three. It says Sarah completed two fifths of Wednesday's crossword and four fifths on, of Monday's crossword in total. Um, what fraction of these crosswords did Sarah finish? Um, pretty similar question there, but you've got four fifths and two fifths. Total told us we were going to add. So we got six fifths which is not an answer choice. Running through the checklist, I see that that's an improper fraction, so I'm gonna convert that to a mixed number. Fraction bar means divide, so six divided by five. Five can go into six one whole time, so that's my whole number. Five times one got me to five. I need to get to six. The remainder would be one, which becomes my numerator, denominator, does not change. That would give me one and one fifth, which would give you the answer choice of C. So that one's maybe like an easier version of number two. Um, you didn't have to simplify anything. You got an answer and boom, it's up there. And look, sometimes you're going to do this work and you'll see six fifths as an answer choice. If that's an answer choice, pick it because um, you're not going to get both of those as answer choices. It's just going to give you one answer choice. So if you see six fifths, that's going to be your answer. If you don't, that's when you go through and uh, run your checklist. All right, number four. Melanie drank seven tenths of a cup of milk at breakfast uh, and three tenths of a cup of milk at dinner. In total, how many cups of milk did Melanie drink today? Again, total, we've got to add. So you've got seven tenths plus three tenths, which is gonna be equal to 10 tenths. Now I've told you in the past, you will not see 10 tenths as an answer choice. Like 99.999% sure you're not gonna see 10 tenths. Um, and honestly, right out of the gate, when I looked at these answer choices and I looked at C, I got frustrated because I was like, gosh, you, you're never going to see 10 tenths as an answer choice. I can't believe they gave them 10 tenths. But I looked at it wrong. That says one and 10 tenths. That's a lot different than 10 tenths. So I've told you in the past, the only thing you have to know is if your numerator and denominator are the same, 
it's going to be equal to one. So if you've got 10 as a numerator, 10 as a denominator, that's where you're going to get one as your answer. Because again, we've talked about fraction bar means divided by, 10 divided by 10 is going to give you one. So if you look at C and you don't look at that one really carefully, you might choose that. Um, but looking at number four, B would be your answer choice for that. That's a good question. All right, pulling up number five. We've got Carol had planned to walk two and seven tenths miles on Wednesday and walks four and five tenths miles on Friday. How much farther does she walk on Friday than Wednesday? So that's just like question number, uh, question number one when it says how much more, when it says how much farther, that's basically the same thing. So you've got to subtract. Um, again, just because it gives it to you in a certain order, that doesn't mean you have to subtract in that order. So let me get the whiteboard going here. All right, so we've got four and five tenths minus two and seven tenths. So our rule when we're subtracting these mixed numbers, you can't take a fraction unless you have a fraction. Well, we've obviously got a fraction, but it's not possible. You can't do five tenths minus seven tenths. So let me put a star on this one. This is a great question. We've got to make this fraction bigger. We've got to make this bigger so it's possible to subtract. So a couple different ways you can do it. The way that I'm going to show you is we're going to take a whole. We're going to change that four to a three. And now I'm holding that hole in my hand. But I'm going to put that hole back as a fraction. So if I'm holding a fraction, that fraction that I'm holding is 10 tenths because my numerators are tenths. But I'm not gonna just put 10 tenths right here because I already had five tenths. So if I have five tenths and I'm adding 10 tenths, that's gonna change this to 15 tenths. Now it's okay that that's improper. I had to make that improper so I could subtract. Then I'll go ahead and just rewrite two and seven tenths the same way it was, and then I can subtract. So I always start with the whole numbers. Three minus two is going to give me one, and then I'm going to keep my denominator as tenths, but then I'd have to do 15 minus seven, and I would get eight. So if I'm looking down at my answer choices, one and eight tenths, still not an answer choice. You've done all that work. Um, you got to go through the mental checklist now. Is it improper? No, but you can simplify it. The one is fine, so you'll just bring that one down. Don't forget it. And then do the same thing we've done for all of these other fractions that we've had to simplify. We're gonna list all the factors. One, two, four, and eight for number eight. And then for 10, we've got one, two, five, and 10. Then we got to find the GCF, which in this case would be two. And we got to divide numerator and denominator by that GCF. Eight divided by two would be four. 10 divided by two would be five, which would give me one in four fifths, which would be A. Now we're talking. That right there is a fan five question. That right there is an EOG Friday question. That's the kind of challenge we need. So right there, not only did you have to flip the order, you had to make a fraction bigger. You had to subtract correctly. You had to simplify. That's like a two or three step problem right there that if you're getting right, that's awesome. Um, I could see maybe where we took a hole away but we put 10 tenths back instead of 15 tenths. I could see that being something that maybe people missed. But that one right there, I really like that question. Um, we're starting to move in the right direction with the difficulty of some of these. So day four, I'm a fan so far. All right, moving to number five. I got a do not disturb sign on my door and I got people busting up in here. All right. Nope, that was five. Number six, it says, Jose rode his bike two and two eighths miles in the morning and three and six eighths miles in the afternoon. How many total miles did Jose ride his bike? Again, you got that keyword total. If you've gotten, if you've 
seen that word the past few and known what to do, you're in good shape on this one. So you got two and two eighths plus three and six eighths. Start with the whole numbers. Three plus two is five. Two eighths plus six eighths would be eight eighths. Again, looking down at your answer choices, five and eight eighths is never going to be one because you got to look at eight eighths and know that that eight eighths is equal to one. But if you've got a five here, you've got a one here, that would be equal to six, which is C. So on that one, even if you subtracted and read that one wrong, you're not going to miss that because there's no answer choice to, su to support it. So if you're reading that one, you're good. Um, one through six, those are, those are great questions. All right, number seven, get this one pulled up. We got on Monday, Dan spent two and four fifths hours studying. On Tuesday, he spent another four and two fifths hours studying. How much longer did he study on Tuesday than Monday? How much longer is the same as how much further, how much farther, how much more? So you know you've got to subtract on this one as well. So we'll get our bigger fraction or our bigger mixed number first. We have four and five tenths minus two and seven tenths. You cannot take a fraction unless you have a fraction. I do, but that fraction is too small. It's not possible. I cannot do five tenths minus, did I put it? No, I did the wrong numbers. Four and two, no, I'm using the frag, I'm using the wrong mix numbers. It should have been four and, two fifths minus two and four fifths same deal though i can't i can't subtract these because four fifths is greater than two fifths so i still got to make it bigger um i'll use the same strategy i just did we'll take a hold away that four is going to change to a three so that hole that i am holding that fraction is five fifths because my denominators for these other fractions are fifths so if i'm holding five fifths and i already had two fifths the fraction that I'm going to put here is really going to be seven fifths. All right. And I'll just go ahead and put my other mixed number on there. Then I can subtract. Starting with the whole numbers, three minus two is going to give me one. Seven fifths minus four fifths is going to give me three fifths, which if I'm looking at my answer choices, that would give me B. Um, three fifths is already in simplest form. Can't be simplified. So for that one, it's like a step shorter than the question that you had previously. So for number seven, you should have had B there. Um, now on this one, you could have had somebody who possibly added because D does make it an answer choice that, an answer choice that gets bigger, uh, even though it wouldn't be equal to seven. Um, but how much longer? You got to see that and instantly light bulb, think, subtract. All right, moving right along to number eight. Sarah used two tenths of a bag of glitter for an art project. Which decimal represents how much of a oh, bag of glitter is left? That's a good question. I can't stand these answer choices. See, to me, they're making this impossible to miss because normally, like, I want you to write down, I'll give you like. 15 seconds. I want you to write down the answer choice that I think people would pick. So I'll give you a second. All right. This should have been an answer choice. Because they're going to see the fraction two tenths. They're going to see the word decimal. Boom, they're going to write two tenths. But it's asking what's left. So this is one of those questions where you could very easily Draw that bag of glitter, split it into tenths. Um, use two tenths of it. And guys, if it's talking about what's left, it's not two tenths, it's eight tenths. Which as a decimal would be B. Because tenths is one number after the decimal. Hundredths is two numbers after the decimal. If you're looking at A, that would be eight hundredths. If you're looking at D, that's a whole number. That's eight because you got uh, a number to the left of the decimal. 
D, or I'm sorry, C would be 810 thousandths. Um, so for number eight, I really don't like those answer choices. Um, but if you did miss it, I can see how you chose A. Uh, but remember, two numbers after a decimal is going to give you hundredths. If we're dealing with tenths, it's just going to be one number. That would be eight tenths. You need to put me in charge of these answer choices. All right, number nine, it says, which number has the greatest value? Again, and remember, guys, we talked about this a lot. Value is what is something is worth. What something is worth. You know, your value, what do you think you're worth? A car has this much value. What's it worth? We're looking for the biggest number here. So if we're dealing with decimals, what am I doing? Obviously, we're going to look to the left of the decimal first. We're going to look at the whole numbers, but it's got one hole, one hole, one hole, one hole. None of those are different. They're all the same. And honestly, for this question, you can think about money. You're looking at a dollar and 34 cents, a dollar and 36 cents, a dollar and nine cents, a dollar and three cents. Really, we would say one and 34 hundredths, one and 36 hundredths, one and nine hundredths, one and three hundredths. Guys, all you got to do is find the one that's the biggest. And if we're thinking about money, what would you rather have? Like, would you rather have a dollar and nine cents or a dollar and three cents? You'd rather have a dollar nine. Would you rather have a dollar and 36 cents or a dollar and nine cents? You'd rather have a dollar and 36 cents. And then between those two, would you rather have a dollar and 36 cents or a dollar and 34 cents? Obviously, you'd rather have a dollar and 36 cents. So that answer would have been one and 36 hundredths, which you could also write as a mixed number. Write it down. Hopefully you got a pencil. Did you write it? One in 36 hundredths would be boom. All right, looking at number 10. Oh, this question. It says Nathan read 40 hundredths of a book one day. He read three tenths of the book the next day. Which expression shows the fraction of the book Nathan has read? Doesn't really give you the answer choice that I didn't want to see, even though I wouldn't want to see any of the wrong ones. But guys, you know, if we're adding these together, to figure out our total, you cannot do it because the denominators are not the same, but you can make them look the same. Now, really, there's two answers, two possible answer choices I could have on this one, um, but there's only one that you see on here. Um, because realistically, I could change my hundredths to tenths. Like, I could take my zeros from the top and the bottom here and change that to four tenths. I could do that, but none of those are possibilities or answer choices. So instead of doing that, I would take my three tenths and change it to hundredths. So to change tenths to hundredths, all I would do is add a zero. But if you do it to the bottom, you got to do it to the top. So really, I'm not even doing the math. I'm just setting up the equation. And if I look at my answer choices, uh, C would be 40 hundredths plus 30 hundredths, which would be your answer. Um, I'm glad that it didn't actually make you do it because I could see somebody putting 43 hundredths as an answer instead of 70 hundredths like it actually is. But remember, don't do that addition or subtraction if your denominators are not the same. Don't even waste your time with it. All right, moving on to number 11. Um, oh, good question. If this thing doesn't stop. Hey, just got a volunteer to co-host. Yes. Uh, number 11, Rose and her six friends are using 182 beads to make jewelry. They share the beads evenly. Right there, that tells you you need to subtract. How many beads does each friend get? Guys, Rose and her one, two, three, four, five, six friends is seven people. Now, again, not a huge fan of the answer choices because if you divide it by six, there's not going to be an answer choice that's close up there. Um, but let me get my whiteboard going here. If I did 182 divided by seven, 
Seven cannot go into one, but it can go into 18 twice. Because seven times two is 14. And if I do that subtraction, it leaves me with four. Bring down the two. All right. And then I would start all over. Seven goes into 42 evenly six times. And seven times six gives me 42. 42 minus 42 is zero with nothing left to bring down. That answer would be 26, which is A. Uh, if you're doing 182 divided by six, you're getting 30 remainder two. Um, 30 is not an answer choice. You would go back, reread it, uh, but I'd be willing to bet on the EOG. They'd give you something that would be divisible by six and seven. You would just have to read it carefully. Good question. And that, that one's actually familiar. We've had that in the past few days. All right, number 12 goes with the day three, that box method. Uh, Israel has 28 buttons. Preston has seven times as many buttons as Israel, box method. How many buttons do they have all together? So this right there is kind of what I talked about in the last video. You can ask the question a couple of different ways, um, but when I see uh, times as many, box method, I'm gonna pull the two things that are being compared out. I'm um, comparing Israel and Preston's buttons. So here's Israel. Here's Preston. Before I do anything, this time I'm going to do it the right way. I'm going to put the star beside who I need. Well, if it says how many buttons do they have all together, that means I need Israel and Preston. They both get a star. They are both important. All right. It says Preston has seven times as many as Israel, meaning Preston gets seven boxes. and Israel automatically gets one. All right, now I just have to use what the problem gives me. Take the information from the question, plug it in. It says Israel has 28 buttons. Okay, Israel only has one box, which means Israel has 28 in that box. And if there's 28 in that box, there's 28 in every box. Let's see if I can squeeze these in here. Now, if you didn't read the question, you might just give me this right here. You might say, ooh, let me give you what Preston has. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 28 times seven. And if you did that, you'd get 196, which is A. But it says, how many do they have all together? So I wouldn't do 28 times seven. Realistically, I'd be doing 28 times eight. So if I do that, Eight times eight is 64, four stays, six goes. Eight times two is 16, plus six would give me 22, which would give me the answer choice of C, 224. That's a good question. Day four by far have been, to me, the best questions. I think they're challenging. I think they make you think. I think they honestly make you, require you to do a little bit of work. Um, so even though days one, two, and three are EOG type questions, day four brought it. Day four seems like some questions that I would do in class. Um, I love that. Um, I'm assuming day five is going to be the same. So um, if you're doing day three and day four on Thursday, awesome. If you're pushing it back and you're doing some work on the weekend, be my guest. Because guys, again, this isn't required. If you're taking the time to do this, that just shows me you're, you're giving some EOG effort and you're still um, putting a lot of thought into, even though you're out of school, you're still, you know, interested in doing this stuff, which is great. Um, you know, my fingers are crossed that we are back sooner than later. Um, I can't watch Grey's Anatomy anymore. All right, I need to I need to see you guys. We need to be in here. We need to be working. So thank you for watching. Um, as we were talking, I told you I got a volunteer. I'm going to see if I can get them in my day five video tomorrow. Um, don't be nervous. I, seriously, if you only want to be on screen for two minutes, one question, that's better than nothing. I want, I want to be able to get you guys involved with this as I try to get it all figured out. But again, thanks for watching. 
Um, thank you for working hard and we'll see you tomorrow.